I want us to have a very small discussion on a very important matter that God began to put in my heart. And uh, it is my prayer that by the time we are done with this, that you will see the intensity of it and that we'll all align and adjust the way it's required. Praise the Lord. It's what I call the covenant of words. The covenant of words. Now, today, by God's grace, we'll be able to probe into this imperative matter that touches on our kingship and our priesthood. In other words, it touches in every area of your life. Friends, let me tell you the truth. And this is the raw truth. All of us don't have the same experience in life. All of us. As believers, we don't have the same experience. But yet, we have received the same content, the Holy Spirit, the indwelling Spirit of God. But if we check the outcome of many believers' life, I thought because we received this same Spirit, all of us should have the same experience of life. But it's so sad to declare or to see or to make, or to make mention of this, that it's unfortunate that not every one of us have the same experience. And this is lashed and pegged on this one matter. Do you have the right understanding? You know how to do this business that you enrolled or signed up into. The Bible says that God has given us all things according to that pertains to life and godliness rather. According to his what? The Bible says that through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory. So God has given us all things according to his uh, to, to lifeliness or to, according to life and, and godliness. But it is only achieved or you enter into those experiences through the knowledge of him. And I discovered that this is the disclaimer. The areas that you have knowledge of are the areas that God decides to give you grace in. Because grace will always flow towards the direction of knowledge. The Bible says that a man of understanding procures favor, but the ways of transgressors is hard. So the moment you experience a hardship in a certain sphere of your life, it could be maybe you are transgressing or you are a transgressor or transgressing a certain principle that you're supposed to deploy in your life. And it happens to be one of these major, major things that I have discovered that not many believers are conscious of. And now, the outcome of our lives takes different shapes and forms. Praise be to Jesus. Praise be to God. Now, there are several things that control the realm of the spirit. One of these things, or one of these elements, is what we call words. One of those vital elements that control this realm of the spirit is what we call words. And everything, friends, rise and falls upon the platform of words. I thought that building was confined within the confines of the labors of our hands. But I didn't realize, or unfortunately many of us don't realize, that our tongues, our words are also building materials. Look at Jesus. Or rather, let's take it back to the book of Genesis chapter 1, which I want us to start there. Let's start from verse 1. Genesis chapter 1 from verse 1 is a common scripture. All of us know it. It said that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was on the face of the deep. And the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Next verse. What happened? And God said, let there be light. There is something I wanted to pick from that scripture. Which happens to be a characteristic of spirits. Spirits love words. Spirits adorn words. So anytime you want to pull spiritual possibilities from the unseen realm so that they can find expression in this physical frame of reference, you have to understand that God has given you a tool that is called words. Words are very powerful. Words are vehicles. Words are spiritual tools of transactions. But unfortunately, many of us think, or an average believer will think that words have no impact. 
So today our discussion, we are going to touch on this matter, what? And I ask that you may give me your attention in the next few minutes. And the Lord will give us understanding. Praise the Lord. Now, all of us know that in the dominion mandate, after God created man, he decided to give him specific assignments. And I discovered that these assignments could not just be undertaken like that. Because in Genesis chapter 1, it is God creating through the words. But at some point he came and said, let us create man in our own image and likeness. So it means that if God can create through words, then it means that we also can create through words. Now, if we talk about likeness, all of us know that like begets like. Praise be to Jesus. Praise be to God. So, when God, or if God can create using words, it means that the protocol has never changed. It is still the same, brethren. It is still the same. So it means that words are equipments. They are uh, elements of creation. Now, you have to understand that the first expression of the dominion mandate after God created man, that is Adam now, in Genesis chapter 2 verse 19, something very, very interesting began to play out. And I want us to go there. Genesis chapter 2 verse 19. Look at this. So that out of the ground, God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam. Look at that. To see what he would call them. God wants to see what you will call. Now, and whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. That was its name. There is no record where we see God disputing. We see God contending. We see God nullifying the efforts of Adam. Simply because he knew that Adam had already taken the shape and the model of the Godhead. He knew that Adam knows what to do. He knew that Adam was expressing the dominion mandate. And this is the first place in the scripture whereby the dominion mandate finds expression. So it began by what? Words. Your priesthood, your kingship, rides on words. In fact, what you call prayer are words. I call it the covenant of words because it determines the rise and fall of many things. Praise be to Jesus. Now let's glide a bit. Verse 20. Look at verse 20. Let's just finish verse 20, please. It says, So Adam gave names to all cattle, to the birds of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, all of us know that I don't want to go there. But you see, the name that he gave to all, everything, the Bible says, that was the name thereof. Brethren, we should understand that this principle has never changed. The move of the spirit or in, the life of every, in the life of a man, you should understand that in every situation, there is a spirit moving, waiting for instructions through the utterances that will emerge from your mouth. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 20. You'll read down to verse, to verse 21. It's a common scripture, maybe we know it. Proverbs 18. Yes. I know you love 21, but let's start from verse 20. Give me King James. We're going to take it from two versions. The Bible says that death and life are in the power of the tongue. Stop there. I thought that it, could, it would start with life. I thought, the way we quote it, man of God, we say life and death. But if we confirm from the scriptures, if we take reference in the, from the scriptures, it is death and life. Why is this so? That was not a typing error. That is something that is being revealed. It takes us back to the formation where God began his creation. And something happens. He decided to shift the formlessness of the earth. He decided to shift the voidness of the earth to life through words. So, things are not supposed to stay dead. Yet, God has equipped you with the utensils to transfer or to convert that death state into a life state or a living state. Praise be to Jesus. 
As powerful as our heavenly father, our heavenly father was or is, he could not, he could not finish or implement creation without the authority of words. Without the authority of words. There is a very, very silent and very powerful partnership between spirits and words. Very silent and very powerful partnership between spirits and words. There is nothing that has been, has been permitted to find expression here from the unseen realm without being transported from that realm to this realm through words. People are busy building with their hands. But on the other hand, they are busy destroying with their words, but they don't know. Because that protocol has never changed, brethren, friends. It has never changed. And never think, because some of, you know, some of you think that if you want to start anything, you must have everything. Let me say this. If you have everything before you start anything, you are too late. If you have everything before you start doing what you need to do, you are so late. You are waiting to have everything. Yet, God himself gave us a protocol. He created the whole earth broke. But he had something. He had something that the spirits were waiting to ride upon so that now the implementation of the concepts he has about creation would begin to find expression. So this creation, you have to understand, had already taken place. It was a concept. But now, what was the technology of converting the concept into a physical reality? Words. What is a covenant? There is an, there is an arrangement, an agreement between spirits and what? And let me say this. Your mastery in your priesthood, your advantage in your priesthood is determined by how you discipline yourself in the realm of words. Yes. I'm going slow so that we can understand this. Thing. It is so powerful. It is so powerful because many of us think that uh, 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 you, you just spoke an idle word and you just walked away. No, 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 no. We are going to discover something today by the grace of God and by the help of God. You have to discover, you have to realize that nothing is, is, is permitted to shift without the involvement of words. Let's, let's continue. Death and life are in the what? Power of the tongue. Stop there. Death and life is in the custody of the tongue. Death and life is under the ministry of the tongue. So it is an abomination for you to stay in a state of death because some of us are waiting for money and yet God has given you a mouth to speak. God has granted you favor. So that favor is waiting to ride on the words you are going to speak. Praise be to Jesus. We have to understand this. Spirits wait to ride on words. You know, there is this common notion that I, had, I hear people say. Okay. Now, you are the same person that is coming to the, to the man of God or to church. Trying to beseech the Lord to, to, to change your situation. But you still, you already branded it a different, a different name. So what are you waiting for? That you already, you had already given a name. You will not experience something different. You won't experience something different. Because according to the spirit realm, you are exercising your dominion mandate. Or you gave a name to the situation. Let's see if it will change. By the way, let me give you this small, uh, I, I decided to do, uh, a, 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 a wide research on namings, nomenclature. And I discovered this. In the ancient Israeli culture, anything you name, you have been given the authority over that thing. Anything you name, authority is directly conferred upon you over that thing. That's why when a woman gets married, the first expression or impression of submission that she should observe it is to surrender her name and get receive and begins to use the name of the husband 
as a sign to show I have submitted under your authority. Anything you name, you have been given the authority over it. Praise be to Jesus. And the Bible says, and they that love it, eat the fruits thereof. Eat the fruit thereof. I believe that this is an agricultural uh, metaphoric uh, scenario here. Because for you to arrive to a place of, fruit, of fruition, there has to be a seed. The question is this, what is the seed? Words. Words. Next verse, listen to this now. No, take it back to verse, verse 20. Let's take it back to verse 20. Now the Bible says that a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. Hold on. And with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Now I need to give us a deeper uh, uh, explanation of this scripture. If you see the word belly there, it means inward. And if you see the word satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, the word fruit there, it means that the inward man will not find satisfaction until he sees the satisfaction or he sees the manifestation of the things he spoke or the inward, inward man spoke. For instance, let me explain. Let's say you have jealousy within you. That jealousy will not find satisfaction and rest until it sees the manifestation of the things you spoke under the influence of that spirit of jealousy. That's when it will rest. So it will not find satisfaction from outside. It will find satisfaction when it sees the manifestation of the things it spoke through your vessel. Until it sees, yes, this, I love it now, let him suffer. Until the, the, the jealousy says, yes, I love, I love the way this man is struggling. I love the pain. Oh, yes, he deserves the pain. It is until that jealousy sees that, that's when it will take rest. That's the meaning of that scripture. Because the effect of your words, the manifestation of your words, are what we call the fruits of your words. The effect of your word. Some of us have been rejoicing. Maybe you know people that are privileged and advantaged. More than you. So when you hear bad things happening to them, there is some rejoicing within you that takes place. <laughs> Maybe could it be that you could be a contributor because at one point you say that you made a statement as showing, expressing your dissatisfaction of what God is doing in that life. That these people don't deserve to experience what they're experiencing now. And that now they're in difficulties. Your spirit, your heart, your mind finds rest when it sees them in trouble. That's the meaning of that. The inward part of a man will never see rest until the manifestation of the words they spoke under the influence of that state of the inward man begin to find expression. For instance, let's just let's use another, another example. Let's say what was inside you was the spirit of love. Now, this love will not rest. This love within you will not be satisfied until it sees the manifestation of the things it spoke through your vessel. That's when it will rest. Because some of us, maybe God has put a burden to be a blessing to somebody. And you find that day and night there is no rest. There is no satisfaction. But the moment you see the things you used to, you have been praying for coming to manifestation. The things that you spoke under the influence of the spirit of love. Getting fruition. Getting manifested in the life of this brother or sister. That's when your spirit, your inner man, your mind takes rest. That's what we call satisfaction. Praise be to God. Praise be to Jesus. Praise be to the Lord. Now we have a few things I want us to understand about words. Let's. Words don't expire. Words will never expire. And allow me to say this. Yes, men die, but their words don't die. All of us are enjoying the words that came out of the covenant God made with Abraham. The redemption plan began with him. But it, is fine. It, found, it found fulfillment through Jesus. All of us know that. What was this thing that God had to secure, to capture for us through Abraham? And how did he do it? Through a covenant. How? What? 
Words are so powerful that they can inform, manipulate your atmospheres. Words are so powerful that they will determine your lot. Words are so powerful that they can't have the capacity, they don't have the capability of being wiped in the realm of the spirit because in that realm, there is no, no mistake. Everything you said, it will be held against you. Everything we say. I discovered that 90% of marital distress, domestic fallouts, I realized, man of God, the divorce cases, the, separat the separations we are having today, 90% happen because of words. If people would only master, if people would only gain mastery on how to utilize words, I think things will begin to shift. Now, let me say this. All of us know that the disciples were filled by the Holy Spirit. And if I take you back to that scenario, there is something that happens there which I think needs to be drawn to your attention or to our attention. The first organ that the Holy Ghost touched was not the heart, was the tongue. The first organ that the Holy Ghost touched was not the heart, was the tongue. Because there's a, there's a, there's a spiritual, synchronized arrangement. Because the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth. What does that mean? The mouth cannot deceive the heart. And the heart cannot deceive the mouth. If your mouth is speaking contrary to what are captured within the reservoirs of your heart, then... Your mouth knows or your heart knows there is deception somewhere. What gives meaning to your words is not the dictionary. It is your heart. It's not the dictionary. It is your heart. And that's why we need to take this matter seriously. Because your priesthood relies on your words. Your priesthood writes on your words. Your priesthood, the quality of your priesthood is determined by the quality of your words. So how do you want to downplay the place of words? How do you want to undermine the integrity of words? As far as God is concerned, you are a creator. You create possibilities every day. You create atmospheres every day. And knowing to you, and knowing to you, you don't know that maybe they could be working against your prayer life. Because you are busy praying this, then within another after a short time, your confession, your words are very different. It's, this matter is so serious that Jesus Christ was so keen about it. But it's unfortunate. Let me bring this to us also. The book of James bears record that no man was able to tame their tongue. If you look at Abraham, at some point, he made lies. If we look at Moses, at some point, he did not act as he was instructed. If we look at Paul in Acts chapter 23 from verse 2, something begins to play out. The high priest Ananias sent men to slap the mouth of Paul. And we see Paul getting agitated. And he begins to insult the high priest, the pastor. And these people try to ask, Goja, you are the one who told us that we should honor our rulers. But you've just insulted our pastor, our high priest. And that was the beginning of the differences in that scenario between the Sadducees and the Pharisees. They could not recover. If you heard in that scripture where Paul was jailed, it is because of that incident. Let's go there. Start from verse 2. Start from verse 2. Let's look at this scenario. He said, and the high priest commanded, or high priest Ananias commanded them that stood him to smite him on the mouth. Do you have an LT version? New Living Translation? Please give it to us. Now, he says, instantly Ananias, the high priest, commanded those close to Paul to slap him on the mouth. <laughs> Verse 3. But Paul said to him, may God slap you, you corrupt hypocrite. Ah! What kind of judge are you to break the law you are saved by ordering me struck like that? Verse 4. Listen to this. 
Those standing near Paul say to him, Hold on, Paul. Are you the one? Now you began to insult. Do you dare to insult God's high priest? Next verse. He came back to his senses. And he said, Oh, 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 oh. I'm sorry, brothers. I didn't realize he was the pastor. I didn't realize he was the senior pastor. I did not realize that he was the high priest. Paul replied, For the scripture says, You must not speak evil. Get that. You must not speak evil of what? Of any of your rulers. The same Paul who was admonishing his, his brethren, you have to pay, give honor to your leaders. He's the same one who broke, who went contrary to what he said. Let's look at, let, let's, let's, let's delve deep a bit. Wow. I'm, let's go to James chapter 3. James chapter 3. Let's start from verse 1. James chapter 3 from verse 1. The Bible says, Dear brothers and sisters, NLT is okay. Thank you. Not many of you should become teachers in the church. For we who will be judged, or for we who teach will be judged more strictly. Next verse. Listen to this. Indeed, we all make mistakes. For if we could control our tongues, we would be complete, perfect, and could also control ourselves in every other way. So what does that connote? Child of God, what does that connote? That if you are able to tame your tongue, every other, every other area of your life will be sorted. Let's go. Let's, let's proceed because of our time. Verse 3 says, we can make a large horse go wherever we want by means of a small bit in its mouth. All of, us, all of us know that analogy. And small rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot chooses to go. Even though the winds are strong. In the same way, the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches. But a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. A tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. Now the Bible recognizes that we are trees of righteousness. So it means that tongue, a tongue man of God, it can set up for it because a forest is made up of many trees. It means that a whole nation can come down, can crumble just because of a simple statement. I think we've seen that. We've seen that. A tongue. Now, look, look at the next. Verse 6. Verse 6 says, verse 6 says, and among all the parts of the body, the tongue is a flame of fire. It's a whole world of wickedness corrupting the entire body. It can set your whole life on fire. For it is set on fire by hell itself. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. The tongue is a flame of fire. It is a whole world of wickedness and it can set your entire body on fire. Let's go to the next scripture. I will explain something. People can tame all kinds of animal, birds, reptiles, and fish. But no one can tame the tongue. It is restless and evil, full of deadly poison. Hold on. But the Bible just confirmed that we are able to tame all these wild animals. We've seen people that have tamed snakes. We've seen people that have tamed lions. We've seen people that have tamed all these kind of vicious uh, uh, you know, animals. But my question was this. What did they use to tame these animals? The tongue. Right? But why is it impossible or hard for them to tame their own tongue? That's where the big question lies. Because we have succeeded... To convert lions to become our best, our best friends. Our lions, everything, all these funny animals are in our... And we, we have managed to domesticate them. But not many of us have managed to, domis, to, 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 dominis, uh, to domesticate our tongues. Simply because we have, net, we have not yet come to a place of understanding this. 
that we have been made after the image and the likeness of Christ. And please be careful, whatever your brand, whatever your name, because if you go to the book of Matthew chapter 12, verse 36, it says that every one of you, there is no idle word that will not left that way. You must pay account of it. Now we need to press there. Look at this. I tell you this. You must give an account on judgment day for every idle word you speak. Now, it doesn't talk about the judgment that you'll face after death. Uh -uh. The word judgment there is another word of accusation. In other words, it says that words will determine your salvation. Words will determine your accusations. There is no affliction. Of all afflictions I've discovered, I discovered the most potent affliction. It is the self-inflicted affliction. If you enter the night season through your words, the carelessness of your words, no prayer will solve it. No man of God will solve it. No sacrifice will solve it. You must come to a place of reversing what you spoke. That's what we call priesthood. So the reason why we have so long prolonged challenges, prolonged afflictions, we have to go back and believe God to show us what was the reason of this thing. How did it start? Because if it started through your rebellion, prayer will not answer it. You have to align back in disobedience. If a man was the, was, the, was the reason of your dark night season, it takes a man for God to use to change the whole situation. Check. Is there an issue that is of long continuous? You've tried everything. Please let the Lord show you the source. What is this thing that culminated into this experience? Show me. Because if you can trace the source, then it will be easy for you to access and to know what to do, the wisdom way out. Praise the Lord. Praise be to Jesus. Praise be to God. That a man is so... <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Amen. We are going to press further on this tomorrow because today we are just laying the foundation by the grace of God. But we will discover at the end of it all how do we or how does the tongue impart life and death? How does the tongue impart life and death? What you call blessing or words? What you call curses or words? But we see the physical evidence. The physical symptoms of words. There is something about words that we need to equip ourselves with. And brethren, friends, I tell you, even as you walk out from this place, don't join them. Don't join them in their conversations. Because most of us, we want to speak like them because we feel like we need to fit in them. We need to fit in their fellowship. You're squeezy. Una posema, una, 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 una pambana na unangangana wewe. It's like you want to use an opportunity, that opportunity to make people have sympathy and, you know, so that they can attend to your needs. I refuse to be like that. I refuse. I hope, I hope, I hope you are also, you're also coming to that consciousness. Because this matter is serious. Whatever you call, whatever you name, any situation you name, know very well that that is the experience that you are entitled Nothing less than short than that. Let's be upon our feet. Let's be upon our feet. Some of us need to repent. You have children. Unai notion. Nasema na wewe uski angi. How many people have children? Ushe yambia. Unabia na chutuwa kwa. Luna muyu. Aski zangi. Aski angi. Then you are busy complaining about their performance in school. No, no, no. Let's talk. Let's talk a bit. Let's talk. Where are you going to kichwa kumbambia? No, na kichwa ngumu hi. Who you are skiangi? You keep on repeating those words. You keep on repeating what you are doing. You are pulling those spiritual realities to become physical manifestation. So you have meetings in and out with the teachers. <laughs> my daughter, my son is not performing. What is the problem? Parents, hold on. Before you rush to the teachers' help diagnose it. How? What are your conversations with their children? What are our conversations in our businesses? As other people are saying, 
you you expect yako iwe rahisi na wapi unasema ni gumu kama wao ati habari yako biashara eh niko gumu sasa hii how do you expect when a breakthrough niambie i told you spirits love words spirits they love words they wait to partner with words until i knew this even if i feel headache i will not speak about it because the moment i say it is headache i've endorsed it yes what as if you say don't say at at pass is in a sin a do i'm gorgeous that's the fact but there's a more good way to say it ukiambia mtu ni sawa sasa hii kuna pesa yangu iko mahali tuna ngoja ingie hiyo ni saying bye eh ni saying bye naambia mtu anasema mimi yangu nina ngoja hesabiwe ni itiwe hiyo ni saying bye umedanganya because the bible says that he framed the whole world by his word calling the things that are not seen eh? calling the things that are not seen as if they were it has never changed it is the same protocol that governs seed time and harvest your words are harvest your words are seeds and it determines what you will harvest in the future let's get disciplined there are some problems we can work out by disciplining our tongues yes you can walk away yes that luck you can still walk away from it that vision that you have please start start prosecuting it by your words i said when you have everything you need to start anything you are too late you are late because that's not how god built and created this earth he did not have anything but he had words the spirit realm honors words the spirit realm is manipulated and controlled by words you can frame your own world by your words you can change and shift things by your words how comes that you are praying this then on the other hand you are speaking contrary of what you are praying for words is a covenant that's why we have we have watered down the integrity of our priesthood because we think that things will happen just cuz of you having faith no your faith must find expression by how you you talk your conversations you know uh one day i was stopped by a policeman i think my car i didn't know that the insurance had already expired so this police can is mamisha kadabia kaangalia gari akaniuliza how are you unaelewa habari yako sema mimi nimebarikiwa sana akaniangalia that word nasema waenda tu hiyo tu hakuna kitu hiyo tu lift up your hands lord help my priesthood help my priesthood i don't want to be a forgetful here you need to repent repent some of us have cast our marriages we have cast our business without knowing you thought that you were you were trying to fit in because of the existing trends situations you wanted to fit in so you you spoke like them you wanted to seek for the, for their mercy for the intervention you were compelled to speak like them but today lord we come in repentance we know the truth we know the truth now we know the truth I know the truth. I know the truth. I cease. I command my tongue to cease. I bring my tongue under the subjection of the spirit of God. I will speak like God himself. Because you framed the whole world calling out the things that are not as if they were. Help us Jesus. Father we ask give us the grace give us the grace to speak like you to talk like you to have conversations like you we've never seen you talk negative of your nature father help us we receive grace we receive grace we are living here we are going to declare life upon every situation that we killed every situation that we ruined by our words 
we are coming out of this place going to speak life back again we thank you father we bless you in jesus name let's put our hands together let's celebrate the Lord.